Enigma is going to be able to change things up because the one thing about the Ember is uh, he could be tripped up a little bit versus the silences and that 15 minute timing from the Ricky. So dart into arrow. It's been the most popular SEA combo. And then the panel said too, there's a dart into skewer as well too. But more it's about, you know, getting the silences and catching on top of Quinn. So see if Enigma Galaxy is going to be able to execute because I think that for me is name of the game for them. Can they land these sometimes hard to hit spells? And is it going to be also when it's away from a tusk, right? The RPs and stuff like that. So, yeah, let's see how it does go. Yeah, and you can see already running through the jungle here. Don't know if they're going to scout anybody on Enigma Galaxy. Uh, but we did get to sit down briefly uh, with Celery and talk about, you know, a quick message from the fans. We got to see a crazy game the last time around uh, and a little bit about what happens when he actually lanes with Ace. Yo, guys. Got to listen up. One thing you need to know about us. Game and gladiators that's very important knowledge is we like to swap the lane sometimes so sometimes i land with ace sometimes with the retro uh, there's a big difference between these two when you land when i land with ace if i take a last hit he's not very happy uh, he, he will i i need to boot a soup <laughs> he's the core he gets the farm but when i land with the retro he's okay with it he's, he's used to it i take some last hits but when i take the kill with the retro he is not happy He's not happy at all. But with Ace, I can take the kills. So the lesson uh, from this is there's always something. Sometimes you get one, but you don't get the other. Always uh, got to split the pie, I guess. Splitting the pie, as okay. they say. Um, you know, and I think that last time Ooh. got a lot of uh, those last hits stolen away. And El Tofu back underneath the tower. Oh. Looks like he's going to barely live through that one. Um, but yeah, last time they were working together, right? So it wasn't mm -hmm. stealing last hits away from the, the Witch Doctor on the IOs, is working together. And they're working together again this game, right? It's Ace and Celery, a strong lane. Hoodwink plus Furion versus Ricky plus Mag. So Enigma's actually the one to do a bit of that switcheroo there to try to pressure Duraccio, perhaps, and see if that does work. GH already taking up quite a beating from Tofu. Yeah, but what? Yeah, it's what I love hearing is like the you know you have to the key thing I think there was you have to baby you have to baby your carries <laughs> no matter what they're upset if you take their kill they're upset you take their creeps they're upset it's always gonna be something supports can never win it's true it's a hard life out here for him uh, yeah. and as an offlaner myself I'll just say never take my kills I yeah. swear I'll kill you uh, but regardless uh, the switch up that you were talking about there Amar playing in this lane here against Duraccio and already it's gonna be kind of just this battle of the regen trade. Um, as Duraccio got a tango passed over to him. Do you like this switch up? I mean, Nigma's winning the lanes, it looks like, so far. Hmm. I kind of, I mean, right now with the winning lanes, it's good, but I, I actually, I still like the way Gaming Gladiator's lane setup is working out. But right now, they do have at least the arrow combo, right? That we are seeing them try to pair up, and Ooh. they're going to get the kill. Yeah, that is a very nice one there for him. Okay. So right now, yeah, looking really good. I mean, mid, of course, this is the standard kind of matchup for Death Prophet versus the Ember. He's going to always be able to out-harass Quinn, but I did not expect them to put the Mag plus Ricky in the bottom lane. I guess it's just to put the Sven away from this double range that's just going to be beating on him constantly, so just trying to give Amar a better of a start. So, okay, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. it is working. Across all of them, they're about one creep wave ahead. Let's see if that continues on as GH takes some damage there from his own Amar. reflection. And Amar also in trouble around that meta. The roll through onto two. Great play from Tofu. Oh, almost enough. Can Tofu get through and do the damage? Doesn't look like it, but he can zone them both out now. He actually just kills him. What? <laughs> he just walked in and punched him twice. Oh, okay. And what a play. The snowball to stop the combo stun arrow, because I think Duraccio maybe does die from the burst damage there, but he immediately snowballs and stops that aggression. Big play from Tofu. So Sven, he's going to be able to get some better last hits, but has to be careful every time that meta's up over here. Ooh. Ah, bottom. Bushwhack, almost enough from Salary. But looks like he also will not get uh, enough damage out there to get the kill. Yeah, a weird little walk back there from the Sven, just a, a straight up whiff, and now the snowball to dodge the arrow. Tofu getting a lot done on this Tusk despite giving up that first blood. Hero can do so much, and he has pull available too. I think the arrow actually hit the small camp neutral when they missed, so only has double creep. But he gets a half pull top, as we see on the mini map, while bottom aggression is going to constantly be happening. This is a lane to probably watch just for the last hits more than anything. Down bottom, I think top is just going to be constant aggression for kills on both sides. Mid should get a bit better for Quinn, but he's always going to be losing in that deny matchup versus Sumail. 
Yeah, a little bit of a better time after the, the Batrider treatment that Sumail got in game number one. Really cool to see that. I always, I try to always like look at this and notice when players do this, but Sumail opts for a Blades of Attack in this matchup rather than going for a Gloves of Haste. I think it was actually, I can't remember who did it the other day, but they opted to just rush Treads instead. Mm. So I, it's just really player preference of wanting to, you know, just what they want to build into. Because he wants to just opt for rushing a Falcon Blade, so I guess he just wants the, the Blades first. To well, get that extra harass. And the other thing too is I'm sure it's you're playing the lane differently depending upon which of those skill builds you're going for. Yeah. So Blade is, uh, the the right click damage is definitely substantial with Blade. You see it coming out as well. Oh, oh my God. dude, was his flame guard wearing off right then? I think he just burned through it. I think that was the second nuke. Oh man, gets punished hard there. And I mean, the had a fairy fire, had everything. Yeah, the blades of attack. It's working. And I think that's Falcon Blade already done too as Celery. Also being chased, can Kuro get the connection? Kuro finds him. Yep. Hey, how you doing? Does get a couple more punches. Thinking about a deny. And will he have it? No. Kuro says no. Five ironwood branches there in his inventory. <laughs> so right now, yeah. Lanes are definitely working the way that they've set them up. Seeing the, the mag farming fine. So I guess what the thing is that they have always like the spam, right, on the Magnus. They always have Shockwave to clear these trains and stuff. And he can go for Empower in the laning phase. But that does mean I think Amara's start is going to get a lot slower. I think it's going to start becoming a lot more difficult up here. But yeah, wow, well, Quinn just getting... Did not expect that solo kill to happen. No, not one that you anticipate coming out there. And just getting beat down a little bit here. Tofu will get caught by this arrow. And has a snowball. Delaccio. Oh, that was a good play. Regen through it. And now the turn, the shards, the tag team, Tofu, playing this lane beautifully as GH forced to jump away. Ooh, fancy. Yeah. That quick salve right before he does pop the snowball actually gives him that HP to be able to survive when he comes out. Nicely done. He's been able to zone right now with these Terrorblade illusions. So a little bit of solid play coming in together here in the top lane for Gaming Gladiators, evening this out a bit because they need it. Like, Ember is not having a good time mid. Things are going to have to get swapped around pretty soon. They're double-checking the runes as well. Kuroki, Arcane Runes bottom. So Sumail, his first exorcism, it's going to be a big one. And they still have the Siege alive, too. Every time he steps up there for a creep, it is moved in and then denied by Sumail. Quinn is still level 5. Yeah. And almost level 7 on Sumail. Yeah. That is a massive disparity. And they're even making the rotation over. They really want to just put the pressure onto this tower. You're seeing GH. If he can, if he can land an arrow, Quinn's just probably dead. He is being seen by the ward. GH has two leap charges available, but they'll pop Exorcism, and yeah, GH looks to escape from this one and immediately in on the tower. This is six and a half minutes in. Move forward, Celery, Bushwhack, going to connect. Quinn trying to kill off these creep waves, dodges the arrow, but you can see the power in Sumail getting low on Exorcism means he can kind of tank through some of this now, too. This tower might just pretty much drop. They don't have the way to spam. Quinn's still level five, so he's terrified to even step up. Yeah, it's dead. Move on in, clean it up. Very, very good play coming out from Nigma. Now looking for Celery. They don't have another Crypt Swarm there, so they won't be able to go for the kill. I mean, I've never seen that. I've, I've seen Death Prophet do well versus the Ember Spirits, but never like this. It's 1,500 gold difference between the two of them. Just looking to really play around Sumail. I guess that's going to be the strat for this early game for them. Good person to play around for sure. And then they're probably just going to have to play the catch-up game onto Amara and MC, which should work out because they have Empower for this Sven, so he should be able to farm if they do get any stacks ready for him. None yet at the moment, but a really explosive start there. 3-1. to one. Yeah. Plus it, an early Tier 1 mid. You can see GH, I think, is going in there right now and wanting to prioritize this because, you know, you, you can play around Sumail and he can carry you through the, the early game, obviously, with this Death Prophet, but eventually... They're going to need that damage from Amar. He's going to have to step up and make it happen. Yeah, and eventually he doesn't want to stay up here because he could just die as a Sven up here versus TB as he gets gone on. Does get the stun. And in fact, the rotation coming from Ace. A couple more hits. Amar, he goes down. Sumail makes the move over. And now the Sprout has to eat his way through the trees to get away. But wanting to make another move with this Exorcism because of that early Arcane run. Where did the Wrath bounce to? I guess it bounced to at least one of the targets, but I think it hit mostly Creeps. I think they have too many wards on creeps there, so Ace's Wrath not connecting on too many heroes. Only got six bonus damage from it, too. But Duraccio, interestingly enough, 
Now staying up top here, you, you talk about that Wrath of Nature and how much damage it can do. Could be really strong to make a move right now, but they don't have it. They also don't have the Metamorphosis. Good shards to create some separation. But with that Exo, Nikma going to put the pressure onto this top tower while mid lane, good damage onto Amar. Quinn should Quinn. be fine now. Level 7, he's actually able to bully these two away. They can't go on him. Yeah, now Duracho, he's forced away from this tower. And yeah, Exorcism, since he got that that great rune at the start here with the Arcane Rune mid, he can actually opt to put pressure on top too. Quick moves. But Amar being slowed down, so every second. Going to have to go back and try to get some stacks going for him. As many as, many as possible. No. Yeah, they need to clean those up Oop. for him. And yeah. actually didn't get that much damage into it. Snackrow yeah, takes some damage. Yeah, Tower actually only took, what, 420 damage. They still have the three heroes around. Amar says, get off my creep wave, Sumail. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get into that Mask of Madness here, it looks like. And towards mid, Sumail TP's in. Quinn cleaning up the creep wave behind the tower. Yeah, he's starting to play very aggressive on this Ember Spirit since he sees that Sumail has left the lane. He doesn't have to worry about too much of the stun combo slash silence yet. It will start being a bit more difficult for him in some moments. And whoop, oh. He doesn't actually get the rune. Yeah, Remnant away too quickly. He saw the arrow coming in Whoops. and was worried about it, but MC. RP used and Ace, he's going to drop. That's a solo kill. Well played, but MC, can he get out after? They have Bushwhack ready to go. Going to connect onto him, and Quinn comes on in for the cleanup. Okay, a solo kill for the Madness. Yeah. That is excellent there for MC. Get him started. Good levels, level 8. Starting to see these three. Actually, all the net was pretty even, but we're seeing that Gaming Gladiators have recovered heavily. That being said, though, Amar starting to work on these stacks. We'll start to catch back up. Ancients. He's going to have to be a little careful how he pulls them out when he pops Mask of Madness. Should be fine, though. We'll keep our eyes on it there. To get the arrow. Can't quite. Not quite there. Really Dive. close. Tofu is going to get brought down. Couldn't get the snowball off in time. So, Nygma, bring three heroes top, put the punishment on. MC, he's holding on to this tower bottom alone. I like this play. This is really nice for them. Even though it's only level two Shockwave, he can actually hang on to this decently. He sees the rotation from Quinn, so has to be a little careful how far he steps up. And yeah, he's gonna back away. The Shockwave actually pulled, okay. I thought it, it pulled the catapult into the tower range there for a second. It took a hit, but there is a wave there to tank. But yeah, tower, catapult is gonna die. So it yeah. does hang on to that tower nicely. Ace didn't bring the treants over. Yeah, Celery actually tanking the tower there is... Yeah, they're oh. just a little late. They summon the treants after it dies, but... Either way, they should be able to finish this tower off as... Now top, they're set up. They see Sumail. It's a bit far up. They also see Duraccio. Kuro spotted him on the Ricky. Chase down onto Sumail. Shards block off. Pops Exorcism, turns to fight. Bushwhack there. Pops the Sharpshooter, runs away as Arrow... just. Barely heading past Tofu. They can reset away from an Exorcism. They forced that one. Gaming Gladiators with some heads up moves as they take the bottom tower. Really well played. Yeah, nice move. And thinking about, you know, the next couple of minutes here, that one obviously not with an Arcane Rune. They've got two minutes with a little bit of freedom on the side of Gamer Galaxies. Gaming Gladiators. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait. <laughs> My brain just <laughs> fell apart there for a second. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it's mag done with the mech. I, I think it's, yeah, it's really big, though. Every time I think that Nigma does waste that DP ulti, it's going to be hard for them to close the map at all. So I think Gaming Gladiators get a big window to be able to get aggressive again here and look for the Sven, even look for the Death Prophet. Duracho playing very aggressive, but he's got teammates coming over. Yeah, they have to know that they're in the area. And the big wraparound coming from Ooh. Quinn and Celery. But the rest of the team, they're a little bit slow, and they also have this Moonlight Shadow. So Moonlight Shadow is going to break with no vision in the area. Sumail spots Quinn, and he rev minutes away. There's a point of silence now in Sumail. Quinn knows at level 10. Very likely that Death Prophet has it, and he doesn't know where Ricky is a lot of the time, too. So like we were saying earlier, that's one of the things that Quinn does have to be very cautious of this game is just getting caught under these silences early on. And they see MC bottom, Quinn. Nice move in. The Tumbler versus Tumbler. Got the chains, holding on to it. Thinking about popping it now. They are bringing in Amar. And Mech, the RP, the turn, the stun. It's going to come right in time. And Quinn almost, he's going to be able to get out of there. But not so lucky on Ace. Can't quite bring down MC, that Mech. 
even just him, like them Tumblr versus Tumbling versus each other, making pu pulling them a little bit further to toward his team, so we'll survive. And Amar gets a kill. Still has God Strength, goes to Ancient, so an effective usage for him. And Duraccio is going to pop his transformation ability. Mm -hmm. Start to take that Metamorphosis Tier 1 tower down. Pop the Glyph. Radiant and they do also have Tofu in the area. Mar would spot him if he headed down this cliff at all. He sees him now. Yeah. And an interesting ward over there, too. Spots GH and Sumail moving in. That's a nice ward. I like that one a lot. It's going to give you vision. What? Does it give slight? Yeah, it gives slight vision behind the tower. Get, uh, that's actually a really beautiful ward. <laughs> that's a really cool one. I like that one because it's out of range of the usual sentry that you're going to place for the high ground vision, too. So uh, that's a nice one. Tofu. He gets caught here. And Arrow comes out. So Tusk going to drop. Started his TP. Gets yeah. instant arrowed. They were super ready for that one. Enigma. Looking much better this time around. Being able to get the farm secured for Amar. He is a little bit behind his counterpart, but that being said, Sumail is dominating. Yeah, it feels like they're actually having a full regular game of Dota in a yep. way right now for Enigma Galaxy and can kind of play around these big ultis, whether it's just the exorcism timings, uh, obviously Magnus with the RP, he's getting closer to the blink. There's all these things that are starting to come together in concert for Enigma. Yeah, and it's always, I feel like it's always huge for them whenever they're able to set up any of these type of kills or defenses when they don't have the RP, when they don't have the exorcism, if they can catch these plays. And now, I believe that's going to be the shard finished up on the Ricky too, so it feels like they can start to make plays a lot easier without having to rely on either RP or exorcism to go for them. They just sleep set up into that arrow and try to get some more kills onto Game of Gladiators. And you're seeing that GH is just throwing out arrows to kill the catapult here. Like, mm -hmm. they're not really emphasizing trying to super hard push mm -hmm. down these objectives. I think that they're recognizing these lineups, it, it's going to scale super hard mm -hmm. really on Enigma. Pretty interesting, though. So this time around, they are going to be going for the vessel, but not last game when they were playing yeah. versus IO Witch Doctor. Okay, all right. Well, GH is playing Marana this That's time. true. <laughs> that's fair. Radiant he knows what to go. Kaya Sanj on Sumail. He's level 12 already. This is a big timing for Enigma Galaxy. Also, still have that Magnus RP, and there's that dart. It's easy pickup there on the Celery. So they'll take down the Squirrel. And are they going to try for more now? The catapult's about to die mid. It's always this awkward spot where it's like, well, what are they going to try and do now with this timing? Do they just take over the dire jungle? Do they opt to try and sweep? across and look for pickoffs. If they can set up, I think it's still just pickoffs. If you get one of those big heroes, not one of the supports, if you get like the TB or that Nature's Prophet or Ember, then you can maybe transition it into a Roshan immediately. Because both teams, I think, kind of have the similar style of just being able to force Rosh immediately if they do get a big pickoff. More so Enigma Galaxy right now because they have that level 2 XO for Sumail. And now they have Blink on MC, so lots of different forms to catch. This feels like a really big timing for them to shut down Gaming Gladiator's map. Yeah, almost level 12 on MC now, and did see the Moonlight Shadow. There's Treants that are scouting around. Look They're, at the placement of them. He's blocking the camps as well, too. Yeah. He's, he's doing this thing. You know, we've been seeing this from a lot of these Nature's Prophet players. Preventing farm, scouting as well. And yeah, they're just going to waltz into the pit. Okay. They found the timing, but it is scanned. Do they opt, or can they come and contest this? Quinn has an Arcane Rune, but it's dropping pretty quick. Already down below half HP, and... I think if they did want to come and fight this, it was already going to be a bit too late. Yeah. Ace not quite having Gleipner. Maybe if he had Gleipner, he could show up and then they have some type of extra team fight. But Duraccio, he doesn't want to walk into them right now. He's very fragile with his build at the moment. His timing is play around Scotty. So for Gaming Gladiators, it's stalled till that. But Nigma have tons of time to get all this catch. And there it is. The skewer pulls him back in. Shards. Well, Bushwhack to get away. Reflection onto a couple. Tries to live, but not going to happen. I think Duracho actually comes down to try to help his teammate there. Yeah, it's a little of a uh, bold move from Duracho. Very scary. When you're playing into this Ricky, Murata, Magnus, one little misstep, you're going to get just chain stunned into arrowed into, yeah, pulled back into an out of, out of position plays. They still have this ward here. On the side of Enigma Galaxy, they could perhaps try to set up onto Duracho. A big catch. There's dart. the sleeping dart. The rest of the team trying to move in. MC, RP, pull back, skewer. Got him caught. The 
silence is there, arrow to follow. And it's enough, but the Gleipnir catches on to three, and Quinn right on top of all of them with that Arcane Rune going to town. Do they have the damage, though, to bring down Sumail? It's pretty tough. Ooh, it's the last Siphon, though. And Tofu right on top of him. Quinn there also, and Amar, he shows up, has BKB and God Strength, but the Bushwhack catches on to both. Uh -oh. He didn't pop BKB. Amar. Snowball, but they have the punch. He's dead. Amar dropping quickly. No, he gets he's the turn eight. Amar, he's too strong. Oh, I called it too soon. <laughs> the boy is big. The boy is big. The little bit of life steal, that Mask of Madness, it actually gives him enough sustain to survive. <laughs> wow. I mean, that, that comes in at the perfect time for them. It looked like he was going to drop, but not quite. And now a five wipe there for Enigma Galaxy onto Game of Gladiators. Beautiful. And now Duracho, he stepped up again. Oh. He might just die. Oh, catches the arrow. Another one going low and ref well, Sunder, Ooh. it's available. He needs to turn for it. Oh, it just barely steps out of range. 40 HP, he lives. And they'll get a kill onto GH. Oh, I, wow. I think he's pretty lucky to live there, but a nice play from him. He tanking the arrow with his Conjure image so he doesn't get brought down. Ooh. That could have gotten really bad really quickly there for the side of Gaming Gladiators. Enigma using their timings perfectly, using their wards as well too. We saw that really aggressive ward around Triangle getting that initial catch to start everything off. Looked a little scary for a second, of course, oh, yeah. but Amar able to get that big cleanup. Dude, it makes me wonder, like, it, you know, if he had masked the madness a second earlier when the punch came out or something, like, might have actually died. He got down to such low HP there. That was, yeah, splitting hairs, really. So close to him being... Just to him dying and no one else dying on the side of Gaming Gladiator. So perfect there for the side of Enigma Galaxy. And still looking to get aggressive. They've got RP back available. Playing quick here. Kuro hunting. Can't quite find anybody, but MC behind. And Quinn, does he show in the mid lane? They still have this ward. This ward back behind that tier two tower up on the high ground. Yeah, they have both. The secondary ward was placed by the Ricky to try to get that finisher on Duraccio. And Tofu still doesn't have Blink, so he doesn't have that option to be able to save his save his buddies. As, yeah, we're seeing that win probability right now. Enigma, just a 4k lead. It's really liking them right now. They scale really hard, and with a skirt early advantage, not giving Gaming Gladiators much space to farm for this Tower Blade now. So one thing that we had talked about, uh, and I think you would want to talk about, was this snowball save potential. Mm -hmm. Tofu's had a really good game so far, now has the Blink Dagger done. Uh, that can be one of those big counters to both the Sven stun uh, and to the Mag stun. But, of course, if you're just coming out of a Snowball save and then the RP is still there, you could just be griefing your whole team. So it's going to be pretty... Uh, they're going to need some clutch plays from Tofu. Yeah, he's got to be really careful about it. But can potentially save versus the Ricky, the Mirana, the Mag, etc. stuff. So yeah, let's see. He's able to protect the boys or put them into a dangerous scenario. Block off the shards. That was a smoke broken. We're seeing gladiators. They're playing split the map up. They yeah. still want to wait for their timing. Duracho, he's had to go for Manta this game. Last game, he went to just go for. Oop. MC catches there. Does have the blink to get away. So is Tofu. He's fine. They see Duracho though. This ward, it stayed full duration. That's that's really good for them. And wait a minute. They're not going all the way in. RPUs now. They still have things to turn this here. A snowball save. No, they no. can't pull him inside. Oh, really good play by Nigma. Amar just right on top of him, shutting that down. And Nigma covering their bases as they find the sleeping dart now onto the hoodwink. Clutch plays abound. Nigma not happy with what happened last game and looking for some retribution. Clutch ward. I mean, this ward is kind of doing everything for them these last few minutes. It, full duration, it lasted around the Ancient Triangle. And beautiful connection to spells. And even that's dropping the cloud. That's the other thing, too, that we you know always have to look. And also, Tofu has to watch out for if he's trying to go for any snowball saves. Yeah. If that Ricky cloud is placed on top of the place that they're going for, he actually can't really get that save off as easy. And great plays, again, layering their spells perfectly. And on the state of Game of Gladiators, are they going to look to be able to punish this? Exorcism's used. Mag RP is used. But Duracho still probably doesn't feel like he can get involved in fights. It's, so I was saying that he, this game had to go for Manta versus all these silences. Last game, he was able to just go Yasha, Scotty, and just play around that big timing, which he's looking for. Because the Scotty's everything when you're playing versus Sven, playing versus Death Prophet. It's been delayed. And look at this. Ace, Ace is still getting gone on, even with none of those ultimates really up. 
and he's ready and in position. Sumail Godlike, he has had such a good game on this Death Prophet, starting from the beginning. Has the Shiva's Guard done now on top of Falcon Blade and the Sanjakaya? He is a menace, level 16 as well. And still looking to play aggressive. They don't need that RP. They don't need any of those other ults. They're just still just playing around this Ricky Dart combo with either Skewer or Arrow. It's working beautifully for them. And on the side of Gaming Gladiators, they now have BKB on Quinn, but nowhere near any four staffs or any type of these Lotus Orbs to try to protect versus this aggression of Ricky. So they saw the smoke, I think, behind the tower on that ward. Vision very much winning Nigma Galaxy this game here. And going to have to, I'm sure, be kicking themselves later on Gaming Gladiators looking at those wards and how much was given up from them. But nonetheless, they the recognize that the mine. smoke could be coming their way. They don't intercept it. Three heroes still on the bottom side of the map, waiting for somebody from Nigma to show up. Kuro just giving unbelievable amounts of information. Uh, so Kuro is doing the also the uh, observer named Sentry Ward, as you see there placed oh, yeah. right above. Look at it. Name Sentry Ward. <laughs> and they have Vision of Ace, too. That ward behind the tower in mid lane, they might be able to just go onto this NP. Still no BKB on Ace, no way to protect himself. Let's see what they decide to do. They were baiting out bottom for a long time. And now it's Celery just farming up this hard camp. But Kuro spots him. I think, I think Gladiator just still has to just split the map. I think they're doing it kind of nicely here, but Nigma Galaxy's finding them. They're hunting them as well. Uh, it doesn't look like Celery's going to be able to get jumped. But yeah, hunting with the Ricky, waiting for other heroes to show up. They just need the arrow to follow the sleeping dart, and they're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Again, like you said, taking some inspiration from Southeast Asia, the region that's been playing this the most, it feels like. But Duraccio spotted again. And from downtown, the arrow comes out. Might have had a chance to Manta, but couldn't come out in time. And now completely isolated, going to get dropped. They could not do anything in time, and they have another sleeping dart, this time on a Tofu. Break is there, but the arrow comes out a little off the mark, but Amar ready to clean up three dead. Nigma have, just have all the answers. Yeah, and playing just, like you said, completely around vision. It's been Kuroki a menace this time around. Last game, I believe I saw gaming gladiators with like three or four wards up perfectly. They're the ones actually getting all the successful movements. Yeah, this time Nigma able to really dictate pace. Gaming Gladiators, yeah, they're trying to do this split push kind of stuff, split farm everywhere, but they're just constantly hunted by this pesky Risky, uh, Ricky and Vision. And, you know, you think about sort of the more macro situation of what the Western Europe DPC looks like. For Gaming Gladiators, they really want to win here to try and keep their hopes alive of going to the Major. And for Nigma Galaxy, it's trying to stave off elimination, getting dropped down to Division 2. Very much possible if they were to lose this best of three, but right now up 9,000 gold in this game number two, trying to keep their hopes alive. They dropped down some sentry wards, but the vision was already removed. It's looking really good so far. Yeah, Kuroki just being that menace, and they're keeping everybody, the, the two important cores super farmed. Amar, near level 20, same thing for Sumail, he's about to hit 19, and yeah, really nice itemization already. Blink Shivas, he's tanky enough to just jump in the face of this Tyra Blade a lot of times, and Duracho, yeah, still not really close to that Scotty. And he's only level 14. He's five levels or six levels behind that Sven. Oh God, yeah, yeah, Amar is huge. He's gotten away with everything. His team's making beautiful space. They really don't feel like they have the damage that they need on the side of Demon right now. Mm -hmm. And now Roche, it's the next thing on the menu. 40 seconds for Exo. Heads over to that side of the map. A Cloak of Flames found. They do have vision there of Kuro. They see him. And a Walrus Punch trying to kill off that pesky Risky. Four Staff, push him away, but already Tofu dead. Kuro, Wrath of Nature, Kuro in trouble, but Still they get alive. the control. Oh, and there it is. They find the RP connection and will bring down Ricky, but it comes at the cost of so many other lives. Quinn tries to TP out, almost doesn't get away. If MC's a little closer, perhaps she's able to get the kill. And now, Exorcism's ready in three seconds. They might not even need it to finish off this Roche. Gaming Gladiators, this game is starting to feel pretty impossible for Duraccio to ever catch up. They're just playing too fast on the side of Nigma Galaxy, not giving them any breathing room. And they will pop so. Getting close to that AC being completed for the spend. And at that point, you have so much physical damage uh, on the side of Gaming Gladiators and not really any way to really set this up. Uh, underneath the ward right now is Duraccio too. So if they want to, they can make this move down south. There's constant hunting. I mean, even Quinn could get set up on here. His BKB's on cooldown, 45 seconds. 
Feels like anyone who shows on the side of gaming gladiators is just dead. Well, and even when right. they're talking about the timing of the Scotty, it feels like, yeah, it's, it's just going to be coming way too late for Duraccio now. Just such a big advantage for Amar. He's managed to completely overtake this one. And, I mean, items, neutrals are what you're looking for. You're looking for some other way to try and, like, you know, get some damage on these heroes. Because for Gaming Gladiators, they haven't been able to turn the fights ever since that move in the river where Amar was able to turn and, you know, find four kills mm -hmm. back to back to back. That felt like it was the turning point of the game. Yeah, and it was all right, at, right after they found that, right after the 15-minute mark and right after they, you know, played around that ward beautifully for like six minutes. Again, this other ward from Kuro, it's been up almost full duration up in the top river. Uh, they do get that one now. On oh, that sword. Picked up for Sumail, as you can see very much the esportsbet.io odds into the favor right now of Enigma in this game at the very least. Sumail jumps in, MC tries to find an, a target, and the RP is there onto two. They're BKB, but it doesn't matter. Amar is just ripping through them, and Tofu tries to get the blink back. Not quite going to happen. Celery also in trouble. Duraccio hiding off in the trees, but there is nowhere left to hide. A triple kill for Amar. The only one left alive is Tofu, and, well, they are going to eventually go back for the Tier 2 tower, which is still at full HP. They're just walking right through them. They don't They don't even need exorcism. They just keep getting these gorgeous RPs from MC, and oh, an overwhelming blink on the Death Prophet, too. I mean, they, they've got full control of this game, and that was the... Terrorblade showing up with his Scotty. Can't even pop meta, just gets chased down and killed. Dropping the flag right up on their high ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's feeling good. Absolutely. Well, Amar playing on his Sven, and we said he was going to need to be the one that carry in the late game. Smail could make that space for the early side of it, and they've done just that. And well, finding another target right now. No food there with the snowball. It comes cloud. out of it, though. There, it's in trouble. Quinn not able to stop that skewer pullback. And the jump in <laughs> Sumail puts the emphasis on it with the overwhelming blink. Bushwax try and slow it for the moment, but Amar, he runs in. He finds his target. Enigma Galaxy going to, again, take some good damage from that Wrath of Nature. But I don't know if they're going anywhere. No, nope, they still got, they got Greaves up in eight seconds. They're going to be able to full heal it. The game Gladiators may have now finished off. I don't think they can walk back into this with Duraccio. He's got Scotty, but just, yeah, they're so far behind that they can't show up to these fights. And already, Kuro, TP's bot, he's setting up for the next kill. Lens plus Eye of the Vizier. So he's got the crazy catch on the dagger. You can see this cast range, how far it really is. He's able to find him at all. Ace is just going to die. Ace. Baduk. What From downtown, they find their man, and Sven heading on in here, close, but not quite on him. Keeps vision, they find Ace, but R, needs to be a little careful. Sumail, he blinks in too. He's so tanky. They just, it does, like, if you can't win this fight, you're not winning any fight. Ace, he TPs away. Quinn, Duraccio right there on top of him, the R. He pulls back onto both the snowball save, though. But it's okay. on the smoke screen. Do they have anything when they get out of there? No, the turn. Amar, he's bringing them down, ripping them to shreds. Three are gone, and Quinn tries to escape, but the slowdown is there, and the Ember Spirit 2 will fall. A godlike Amar, 32 minutes in, and well, he's dropping <laughs> the flag in the fountain. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, he's feeling good, and he knows that. Gaming Gladder is just on full retreat every single time. They can't take any type of head-on fight. My control is finding every target, too. 3, 2, and 19 on this mag. Feels like every single one of them are just having a pretty spectacular game compared to what we've seen a couple times here from Nygma. Especially Sumo. I mean, 17, 0, and 4. It really feels like he was the one that just set the pace for this game, shutting down Quinn. Quinn never really being able to make any successful rotation. Yeah, really clean game from them. Fast plays. I feel like they never let the split push draft the game of Gladiators was trying to get online with this Nature's Prophet and this Ember making space for TV. It never happened. No. Game of Glad or Enigma of the Galaxy was always there, one step ahead, with vision or with something to be able to predict the moves. Yeah, I mean, they're they're both so incredibly farmed on this Death Prophet and Sven, and you know that vision like you're talking about that was set up for those couple of kills. Uh, and then, of course, taking the perfect fights, because there were a couple of moments where it felt like they might have been able to get somewhere close with it, but 
Eggman Galaxy never really looking back after a really solid laning stage. And so, I mean, Sumail, look at him. He's 46 armor. He's got the Blast Dragon too, so just playing super confident in the face of them. You can see when TB hits him, it's a zero. Nothing really to stop this. I mean, the Scotty again is good to stop the regen, but you need the damage to sort of prompt that need. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's like, what, three items behind versus Amar at this point. Amar pops Warcry with the AC, and everybody's just far too tanky. So now 71 armor next to Warcry. The Sprout, though, is this going to be the big answer? We'll see. The pushback is there. They can try and slow him down. Amar has to get four staff from the rest of his team to get out of there. They've already killed off Tofu. Amar is somewhat low. Go back up. Plays it safe. Yeah. Level 24. They're going to look to perhaps jump back in MC. He sees a target. He's going to go for the RP. When? Right there. Stun. Salary dead. Gleipnir onto a couple. Reflection is out. Able to dodge some of that damage as Quinn Amar gets four staffed out of the trees. And thinking about that RP, pump fakes it for a moment. Silence pulls him back in. Does have that blink potential to re go, but they're not going to do it. And you can see gaming, they're not willing to give up yet 26,000 gold into the favor of Nigma. But they're still holding on hope. Quite a lot of it. Need as much hope as possible in this one. Yeah, they just tickle everybody. Racho's meta does pretty much nothing. They're gonna smoke. Feels like a desperate play here. Who are they gonna run into? Ricky's on the other side. Sumail's there. There's still an RP ready too. Yeah. MC, if he's positioned properly, this could just be the end of the game immediately. As also an Ag Sven now too. So something we haven't seen in some time. The Superman Sven. Are they jump in? They find one target right away. How dare you sprout me earlier? They find and kill him, but Amar getting low. Don't know if it's gonna end up mattering as the rest of the team comes into position. Arrow goes out, not gonna connect onto Quinn. He slept the turn, the snowball. Control for a moment as they're gonna chase him down. Bushwhack onto a couple, but the cloud was there. Nowhere left to go. They have shown the value of this Ricky here on Kuro. And well, eyes on the prize. Nigma, they're gonna head on back over. Oh, they see Duracho. Okay, <laughs> immediately jump on to the poor old Terrorblade. Four staffed away for a moment, but the stun's gonna be there. MC pulls him in, RPs him down, and GG is finally gonna be called. Tied up the series. Going to game number three. And this time it's just really nice plays coming out from Nigma Galaxy of a lot coming from Sumail, kind of destroying the mid lane and setting the tempo, taking mid tower at seven minutes and stuff.